Hi everyone, this is an example of a, a problem you're going to be studying uh, where we have a set of data. This happens to be a bun count. It's a blood um, urea nitrogen count that doctors use to test a, a person's kidney function. Uh, the normal range is from 7 to 20, and it's measured in milligrams per deciliter. So here's the results from 20 patients that were selected at random. And you notice that we have oh, a, a low of, uh, I think, 11 and a high of 22. High of 22. So what we're going to do, this is... This, uh, these 20 pieces of data are ungrouped. It's called raw data. Nothing's been done to them. So what we're going to do is analyze these 20 pieces of data. The first thing we're going to do is group them. It's called binning or grouping. And what we're going to do is look at various levels of the bun count. And what I've done is I've started, this is arbitrary, but you have to start at a level lower than your lowest entry. Remember our lowest entry was an 11. And we have to end at a level higher than our highest entry. Of course, to make sure all data points are, uh, have a place to be, to be put. And so what I did is I said, well, let's start out at 10 and go up to 12. And then the next level would be from 13 to 15. Obviously, your second level here starts with 13. It's got to be higher than 12 because we, can, we can't duplicate. But this 10 is a lower limit, and 13 is a lower limit, and 16 is a lower limit, and 12 and 15 and 18 are called upper limits of their particular class. So we have five classes here. The lower limit of the first class is 10, the upper limit is 12. The lower limit of the second class is 13, and the upper limit is 15. Now, there's also something called boundaries, which are half a unit less than and greater than these limits. For, for example, the boundaries of this first class would be 9.5 and 12.5. The reason they have boundaries is just in case a measurement came in, say, at 12.2. Uh, you know, where would you put it? Would you put it in the first class or would you put it in the second class? Well, since the boundary for the first class is 12.5, then you would include it in the first class. We don't have that uh, situation here because they're all in nice round numbers. So I've established these five classes. The width of the class, by the way, the width of the class is 3. You get that by looking at the difference between the lower limits. 13 minus 10 is 3. Or you could look at the difference in the upper limits. 15 minus 12 is 3. 21 minus 18 is 3. 22 minus 19 is 3. So the class width is 3. It is not 12 minus 10, it's not 2, it is 3. That is the width of each class. So then what we're going to do is we're going to look at the frequency of each class. By frequency, we mean how many patients had bun levels between 10 and 12. And I say there's three of them here. You go back between 10 and 12, well, we have 1, we have two, we have three. So there's, those are the three people um, that have levels between 
10 and 12 milligrams per deciliter. That's called the frequency of that class. Count them. There's five who have between 13 and 15, 8, 3, and 1 between 22 and 24 milligrams per deciliter. Now, if you did everything properly, these should add up to 20. You should account for all 20 people, 16, not two, and it does, up to 20. So that's what the frequency column is. The relative frequency represents what percent of the total are in each class. So three people had levels between 10 and 12. So out of all 20, that represents 3 over 20, or 0.15, or 15% of the people had levels between 10 and 20 um, milligrams per deciliter of bun. Do the same thing with 5 over 20, and 8 over 20, and 3, we already did, and 1 over 20. Now, if you did, again, if you did everything properly, these percentages should add up to 100%. And in some cases, they may only add up to 99.9, .9, or they may add up, may add up to 100.2 or something, you know, depending upon the rounding that you need to do. We didn't have to do any rounding here. They all came out nice and even. But that's what relative frequency is. We're going to learn later on that this says that 15% of the people had blood levels between 10 and 12. And we're going to learn later on when we talk about probability that if we looked at another patient, patient number 21, we would say that patient, the probability that patient had a bun level between 10 and 12 would be 15%. We're not going to worry about probability now, but just to give you a heads up of what's coming. Then our final column here is cumulative frequency. What this measures is how many uh, people, or how many tests, were from 12 or less. We take the upper limit of the class. How many people had bun levels of, of uh, 12 or less? Well, three of them did. That's why the cumulative frequency is three. Here, we ask how many people had bun levels of 15 or less. Well, it's this five plus this 3, which is 8. And you keep going, and of course, if you did everything properly, all 20 had bun levels of 24 or less. So that's called a grouped frequency table or frequency distribution. So now what we're going to do is go to stat crunch. And you see what I've done here in variable 1. I've listed all 20 bun levels there. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight those like that. And we're going to go under graph. And we could do uh, a bar plot. A bar plot with the data. We didn't summarize anything. It's with the data. And we're going to select variable 1. That's the only one we have. And we're going to compute it. And here's what you get. This is a bar plot showing, you know, how many people, uh, or how many times, rather, the frequency, how many times 11 showed, how many times 12 showed, and so on and so forth. Now, anytime we do a display like this, we have options. You can go in and copy this, click on it and copy it, and then you can paste it into a Word document, like your midterm project, for example. We also can do a stem and leaf plot. We're going to learn about those. Stem and leaf plot. Again, we just want variable one. And what a stem and leaf plot does is it shows the stems, which are only one and two, because our data goes from, the, uh, from 10 to 22. And you see we have 11, 12, 12, 13, 13, 14, 14. We do show repeats. They show two rows of ones here because they're so long and only one row of twos where we have a 20 and a 22. We'll talk more about stem and leaf plots in, um, in seminar. 
Okay, now what we can also do is go in here and put down our frequency, our frequency table that we had. In other words, we could go in here. Let's see if I can paste it. Uh, I forget what. No, I'm going to have to put it in. Let's see what those were. It's going to take me a second here. Uh, 10, 12. 10, 12. Then here we have 13, 15. Then here we have 16, uh, 18. Next we have 19 and 21. And finally, we have 22 and 24. And then the frequency of those was um, a three eight. Uh, three five eight three one. Three five eight three one. Okay, so what I have now is the group data. The group data. So what I can do with this group data is again go under graph, uh, show a a bar plot with summary. Now I did summarize it and I want the categories to be in um, variable 2. Watch our columns here. The counts will be in variable 3 and now I have a bin or a grouped data a bar chart which shows how many uh, people had readings between 10 and 12, how many had readings between 13 and 15, and so on and so forth. It shows the distribution of the readings. This is a frequency uh, distribution. Again, you can edit it, you can save it, print it, do whatever you want with it. Now, another thing that we can do is we can do a pie chart, again, with summary. We want the categories to be in variable 2, that's the milligrams per deciliter. The counts will be in variable 3, and we want the percent of total. We compute this, and here's our pie chart. You see how easy StatCrunch is to do this work for us? Now, a pie chart must identify each slice, like the red here is uh, readings between 13 and 15, and it also shows you what percentage it is, 25%. We have 15, 25, 40, 15, and 5, exactly how we have in our, in our frequency, frequency table. Now, what we're going to do um, next week, we're going to uh, go into uh, like variable 1 next week, and we're going to learn how to calculate summary statistics. And if we go into uh, code column number, variable number one, column number one, we're going to be able to calculate all of these things that we're going to be talking about in, uh, in a couple of weeks. But for now, you know hopefully what a frequency table is, how to construct a frequency distribution, how to uh, construct a bar plot using StatCrunch and a pie chart. If there's any questions, email me, afiducia at kaplan.edu.